Stahl takes current controversies about transgender access to public bathrooms as a point of departure to address the design consequences of creating safe, inclusive restrooms for everyone, irrespective of age, gender, religion, and disability. This is not the first time that bathrooms have become an issue. At different moments in U.S. history, the public bathroom has registered social anxieties triggered by the threat of previously marginalized groups moving into mainstream society. Milestones include the creation of the ladies' room as more women entered the paid workforce in the 1880s, the fight to abolish colored bathrooms during the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s, the fear of being infected with HIV by sharing restrooms with gay men during the AIDS crisis in the 1980s, and the disability rights movement's demand for accessible restrooms that led to the Americans with Disabilities Act in 1990. The transgender bathroom debates uh, is just the latest episode in this long history. Both sides frame the issue as a matter of safety. Opponents falsely characterize trans women as predatory men, masquerading in dresses to stalk women and girls in the ladies' room, while trans advocates point to statistics that show how trans people, trans women of color in particular, are the likelier victims of restroom violence. What's threatening about trans people is that they call into question the idea that one's gender is determined by anatomy. Trans, non-binary, intersex, and other gender non-conforming people demonstrate that there are many ways of expressing one's gender independent from biological sex that don't conform to the binary of sex-segregated bathrooms. The most common approach to the all-gender restroom is the single-user solution. This consists of a single-occupancy, ADA-compliant bathroom labeled gender-neutral. This approach stigmatizes not only trans and gender non-conforming people, but also people with disabilities by separating them from others. Stald advocates an alternative, the multi-user solution, which treats the restroom as a single open space, replacing the typical stalls whose revealing gaps compromise privacy with floor-to-ceiling partitions and communal areas for washing and grooming. We've developed a process for retrofitting sex-segregated restrooms that takes the multi-user approach a step further. First, we remove the plumbing stack wall and treat the bathroom as one open space. We then eliminate the corridor wall, treating the bathroom as a porous extension of the hallway. We add three different types of fully enclosed stalls, standard, ambulatory, and ADA, as well as caregiving rooms, which include sinks and changing tables. We add communal grooming and washing stations off the circulation path, and finally a lounge that transforms the corridor into an animated social space. This solution has three advantages. Restroom users can visually monitor one another, reducing the risk of violence. Gender non-conforming people aren't stuck between two options that don't align with their identities. And it meets the needs of the trans community, as well as a wide range of differently embodied people, including caregivers, the elderly, mothers, Muslims, and people with disabilities. Stalt has also developed a prototype for high traffic spaces like airports that reimagine the restroom as an open precinct animated by three activity zones, grooming, washing, and eliminating. We're promoting inclusive restrooms through three initiatives. We've compiled our research into an open source website accessible to designers, students, cultural institutions, and municipalities. Stahl team member Terry Kogan is spearheading our initiative to amend the International Plumbing Code to make the multi-user solution code compliant. And through lectures, workshops, and publications, we're raising awareness that bathrooms are but one example of the need to create inclusive public spaces that allow a broad range of people to productively mix. To learn more about Stalled, please visit our website.